Welcome to Unfiltered. Here's tonight's headline. That's it? Is that, was that, is that it? That was it? Okay. The highly anticipated meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un ended with a whimper as the two leaders signed a joint statement that was largely symbolic and lacking in any real substance. The statement reads, in part, President Trump and Chairman Kim Jong-un conducted a comprehensive, in-depth, and sincere exchange of opinions on the issues related to the establishment of new U.S. DPRK relations and the building of a lasting and robust peace regime on the Korean Peninsula. President Trump committed to provide security guarantees to the DPRK, and Chairman Kim Jong-un reaffirmed his firm and unwavering commitment <clears throat> to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Both leaders also committed to holding follow-on negotiations led by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and to repatriate the remains of those killed during the Korean War. In addition, the president announced that the U.S. would end what he described as war games with South Korea, adopting the language North Korea uses to describe joint military exercises. He called them expensive and provocative. Of course, that one came as a surprise to South Korea. What was the statement missing? Well, pretty much everything, all the things. There was nothing about enforcement, nothing about verification, nothing about next steps besides a vague promise to continue negotiations. Despite a lack of specifics, President Trump spoke in glowing terms about what he was able to achieve. We're very proud of what took place today. Uh, I think our whole relationship with North Korea and the Korean Peninsula is uh, it's going to be a very much different uh, situation than it has in the past. We both want to do something. We both are going to do something. And we have developed a, a very special bond. So what did it all mean in the end? Well, the ruthless dictator got to play on the big stage with the most powerful man on Earth, and the president got a handshake and a photo op. I guess they both got what they wanted out of it. The world, it got a worthless piece of paper signed by two guys who are best known for breaking promises. Here's the deal. This might amount to empty symbolism that isn't likely to end with much of consequence, but words matter, and Trump's Trump's words after the summit are, to quote the New York Daily News editorial board, an atrocity. He said of Kim Jong-un, his country does love him, his people, you see the fervor. They have a great fervor. Tell that to the 130,000 political prisoners in North Korea. Tell that to the countless victims of forced starvation or the 200,000 North Korean children suffering acute malnutrition or all the victims of religious, ethnic, and gender persecution subjected to the forcible transfer of populations and enforced disappearance of persons. Kim Jong-un enforces human rights abuses, including extermination, murder, enslavement, torture, rape, forced abortions, and has assassinated members of his own family. He is scum. He is evil incarnate. He is inhuman. Trump, he calls him honorable. Let me bring in my guest, CNN national security commentator and former House Intelligence Chairman Mike Rogers. Um, all right, Mike, what are, what are your thoughts uh, initially coming out of this summit? What do you think? I don't know. You maybe changed my mind. That was a strong... <laughs> but listen, I... It's I, worth I, pointing I, this stuff out, right? No, because the absolutely. symbolism and no, the hope absolutely. of peace is, is great, but it's, it's really easy to compartmentalize all the other stuff. And when it doesn't really get addressed by this president, I think it's worth reminding. Go ahead. No, and I completely agree with you. I, I, let me tell you why I'm very cautiously optimistic. Okay. So we've moved to a different place that we've never been with uh, North Korea, which is direct relationships. It's access. And mm -hmm. one things that we one thing that we knew in the in the old business of intelligence is access is really important. Mm -hmm. You get to b better understand intentions and other things. So I I looked at it this way. We're not talking about throwing bombs at each other. We're talking about the possibility. Mm -hmm of some framework moving forward. That being said, I have lots of reservations and I and again, you know, there's good Trump and bad Trump in most things and this one I think is completely exemplifies that with giving them the the training exercises off the bat. I, I thought that was a really bad decision. Yeah, I mean, the largest concession of the whole process seems to be um, the end to U.S. conducting those military drills in South Korea. Was it a mistake to take that away? And was it also a mistake not to, like, warn South Korea? Oh, clearly. I was in uh, uh, South Korea last fall, and the one thing that all of their senior leadership that I met with was uh, concerned about is what they called Korea passing. 
meaning making decisions without consulting with South Korea. It's their peninsula, they're, they've got troops at risk and civilians at risk, and you know the list is pretty long why they ought to be included. And this is exactly what happened. They didn't even find out about it. This is what they're concerned about. So I think they're going to, the administration in South Korea is going to put on a happy face, but I guarantee you they're not happy about where they're at right now. And remember, these operations were to show North Korea that the United States could show up and other some uh, NATO allies could show up in force with uh, the capabilities to destroy North Korea. You know, you show them that to keep everybody in check. That was our mutually assured destruction, if you will. You take that away, uh, you know, that's, that's a huge concession, not only to North Korea, but by the way, the Chinese, who loved that. They did not like these exercises ever, and this was a big win for them. Right, and suddenly the, the region feels a little less safe, uh, perhaps, to some of the people who, who, need, who need it most. Um, the White House and Secretary Pompeo have reportedly agreed that representatives from a Senate working group will attend any further negotiations with North Korea. What do you make of the um, idea to include Congress in this process going forward? What's the thought process behind that? Well, I think they were very upset about the uh, Iranian deal. I was one of those members who was equally upset. So I think it right. probably inclusion is a good thing. If you want, ultimately, a Senate-confirmed treaty, you, you have to have them engaged. So I don't mm. think this is a bad idea. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'd invite them to all of the key meetings, uh, but I think having yeah. them along, or at least have some understanding that if you're going to participate in the meetings, you can't run to the TV cameras and say everything that happened in there. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. Uh, and at the end, they're all going to have to make the determination, the president, do I, do I negotiate the treaty? And the Senate, do I pass the treaty? So, you know, that's probably the best little piece of politics I've seen coming out of the White House in a little while. Yeah, I, I, I agree Congress should, should play a bigger role in these kinds of, um, in these kinds of treaties. Uh, but also just practically thinking back to when Trump and Congress have gotten together on, I don't know, name your issue, immigration, for example, uh, health care. We kind of end up in stalemates. Is there a risk that Congress, uh, you know, kind of mucks this up? Oh, always. If you're talking about Congress, there is <laughs> always the opportunity <laughs> to muck it up. I'll take that bet every time, uh, S.E. But I will tell you, though, I, I think, again, if you want the treaty, they have to go through the Senate to get that treaty. Yeah. So including people who are thoughtful on, and really do want to see an outcome here that could yeah. help protect the United States. <laughs> Uh, and prevent nuclear war or any war and any exchange of yeah. conflict is, is probably a good idea. Again, I worry there's a little bit of vanity diplomacy in all of this, mm -hmm. that it's me, I got this, and it's mine, and I did this. Mm -hmm. And I worry, you know, his kind words. He doesn't want to share the ball. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like sharing much. And he's, you know, the kind words for Kim Jong-un, taking his words and using provocative with military training exercises, by the way, which we do with Europe to right. push back on the Russians. I, I don't know if he feels the same way. And so, I, again, I, I'll cautiously optimistic yeah. that we, the dialogue started. There's a lot of things here we got to start to get right. And the other one is, please, Mr. President, prepare for the next one. He was very <laughs> excited that he didn't prepare. And some of those comments, I think, reflect that. Well, he's, uh, he's so excited uh, about what he accomplished from this one. I'm not sure he would do it any differently the next time. But, but let's talk about some of the optics of all of this, things that I mentioned. Um, also, the North Korean flag hanging side by side next to the American flag, the, the glowing reviews from Trump saying that he trusts Kim Jong-un, that Kim loves his country. Uh, this is exactly what Kim wanted. But what are the dangers of treating a dictator like royalty? Well, I mean, clearly, this is where, again, preparation would be really important. The president could be encouraging about the talks, right. encouraging about turning a new leaf without saying we condone everything that you've done uh, and are doing and currently will be continuing to do during the negotiations, which, as you noted, was 130,000 political prisoners, mass starvation in parts of the country. You know, two-thirds of the country doesn't get electricity 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, all of the problems that are wrought by this really ugly, brutal regime, and he just puts a nice face on it. Again, uh, someone told me today, they said, you know, this is like Trump doing a real estate deal in Queens. You know, he butters you up before he smacks you around a little bit. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's it, uh, but I just don't think it plays well because the subtleties of these negotiations have impact not only in North Korea, but to North Korean allies, right. some in China, and our, our allies, uh, Japan, in South Korea, and that's what I worry about. It's that dis dismantling of 
of what we would consider common sense in the approach to yeah. push back on somebody who's a pretty rotten apple. Yeah, and, and, and normalizing him, right? Um, right? Elevating him at the same time. Um, Mike, thanks so much for breaking all of us down. I appreciate it.